Hey guys, it's Shireen. Thank you for tuning back to my channel. So between 1967 and 1985, Mary Beth gave birth and buried nine of her children. Authorities believe that she had a disorder called Mouchazin by proxy. And pretty much this disorder is a mental illness and it's child abuse. It's pretty much where the caregiver, usually the mother, fakes symptoms or causes real symptoms to make the child look sick. No one really knows what causes this disorder. Some of the symptoms are poisoning, suffocation, starving, and causing infections. And in this case, killing your child. People with this disorder crave attention and sympathy from others. And they love the fact that they deceive people who are higher in power like doctors and um, social workers. They just the, love the satisfaction of deceiving others. She was arrested and convicted of only one of her children, but authorities and family members believe that she killed eight of her nine children. So a little bit about Mary Beth's earlier life. Mary Beth was born Mary Beth Rowe on September 11th, 1942. She was born in a small town called Doonesburg, New York. Little information is known about her up until the age of eight. All that is known that is her father. Her father, Alton Lewis Rowe, was deployed in World War II. Her mother, Ruth, had to work various jobs. And because her parents were away, um, Mary Beth was shuffled between relatives. And actually, one elderly relative said that her death was unwanted. Mary Beth actually told her brother that he was the only one that her parents wanted and not her. There's I read that I read on one article that they said that her father was abusive but I didn't read it anywhere else besides that one article so I'm not sure but she was an average student in Dunes Dunesburg High School and she graduated and she worked various jobs afterwards in 1963 she met her future husband Joe on a blind date and by spring 1960 1965 they married Joe is known to have a quiet personality, but a very happy-go-lucky outlook on life. So her first child, Barbara, was born on May 31st, 1967. And on January 10th, 1970, her second child, Joseph Jr., was born. Now, while pregnant with her third child, Jennifer, her father suddenly died of a heart attack in October 1971. Jennifer was born on December 26, 1971, but sadly, eight days later, she died. People believe that this is the only child that died of natural causes. 17 days later, after Jennifer, her third child, died, she rushed her second child, Joseph Jr., to the hospital, claiming that he suffered seizures. He was checked out. He was, yeah, he checked out, and he was brought home. Hours later, Mary Beth came back to the hospital claiming that she found Joseph in his bed, tangled up in the sheets in blue. His, his death was ruled as SIDS. Six weeks after Joe Jr. was pronounced dead, um, her first child, Barbara, was rushed to the hospital. Mary Beth claimed that she had convulsions, and but she was sent home. Hours later, she rushed back to the hospital and Barbara was dead. They declared it edema raise syndrome. Now, those who attended all her three children's funeral claim that Mary Beth acted like the funeral was more of a social event and that it was just weird that she was more being social than grieving the loss of her children. Her fourth child, Timothy, was born on Thanksgiving Day in 1973, but sadly, three weeks later, he was dead. They ruled it as SIDS. Her fifth child, Nathan, was born on March 30th, 1975. He died on September 2nd, 1975, that same year. Mary Beth claimed that she was driving and she had Nathan in the front seat and she looked over and noticed that he wasn't breathing. They ruled it as acute pulmonary 
at the mouth. Now I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking what did family members think? What did doctors think around the time? They lost five kids in five years and the doctors just chopped it up to be a genetic flaw that either Mary Beth or Joe Tinning had in their family and so they were advised to not have any more kids. Two of their children by now was um, ruled as having SIDS at their death and in the 60s and 70s SIDS was just being known and not a lot of information was known about that. A lot of family and friends after the death of their first five kids um, thought differently than the doctors. They didn't really think it was a genetic flaw. Um, they saw the babies. The babies were happy, healthy, and active and they were like that up until they died. And they also, some of the family and friends noticed that Mary Beth became upset because she wasn't receiving enough attention at the funerals for her babies. So that was one thing. So three years passed without them having children, but in August 1978, they started the process of adopting a baby boy named Michael that they were fostering. Mary Beth gave birth to her seventh child, Mary Frances, on October 29th, 1978. Mary Beth rushed Mary Frances to the hospital in January of the next year, claiming of seizures. A month later, unfortunately, Mary Frances passed away and they ruled it as SIDS. On November 19th, 1979, to her eighth child, Jonathan. She rushed Jonathan to the hospital in March of the next year, but the doctors didn't know what was wrong, so they sent him to another hospital that had specialists to kind of further work on Jonathan. It came back nothing and Jonathan was sent home. Three days later after being sent home from the hospital, he unfortunately died of cardiac pulmonary arrest. Um, Mary Beth and Joe only had one child left, a two and a half year old son named Michael who was still in the process of being adopted. Um, he was known to be happy, healthy, and active. But on March 2nd, 1981, Michael was rushed to the hospital by Mary Beth, and the doctors looked at him, but it was too late. He was already dead. The autopsy showed that he had ammonia, but not too severe to the point that it should have killed him. A lot of talk was happening amongst the nurses and doctors at the hospital. They didn't understand why Mary Beth, who lived right across the street from the hospital, decided not to bring Michael in earlier, knowing that he was, he showed signs of sickness like the other children. Um, she, Mary Beth kind of waited, waited it out a little bit. And so a lot of nurses started talking like, what's, what's happening, what's going on? And during this time, Mary Beth, her paranoia, paranoia, grew significantly and she decided to move. Now after Michael's death, um, the genetic flaw that the doctors were claiming before kind of was blown. Um, Michael was not genetically their child and so they did not, the doctors and nurses did not understand why Michael who seemed happy, healthy, and active passed away. And so the doctors warned the police to kind of like keep a close eye on Mary Beth. On August 22nd, 1985, Tammy Lynn was born. Now she is the ninth child of Mary Beth. Now for four months, the doctors kept a very close eye on Tammy Lynn and she was reported as being happy, healthy, and active as well. But on December 20th, Tammy Lynn died. Cause of death was SIDS. Again, people started to notice that Mary Beth's behavior started to change. Um, her dark attitude turned to a more sociable attitude. Um, and for some, Tammy Lynn's death was the last straw for them. There were several phone calls from family members, nurses, neighbors, that the police received and they think that Tammy Lynn's death was 
not natural and that they should investigate the other Tinning's children's death. On February 4th, 1986, the police brought in Mary Beth for questioning. For several hours, she denied having anything to do with any of her children's death, but she eventually broke down and admitted to killing three of her children. Now, I have my laptop here, and I'm just going to read a direct quote. Mary Beth Tinning said, I did not do anything to Jennifer, Joseph, Barbara, Michael, Mary Frances, Jonathan, she confessed. Just these three, Timothy, Nathan, and Tammy. I smothered them each with a pillow because I'm not a good mother. I'm not a good mother because of the other children. Now, Joe Tenning encouraged Mary Beth just to be honest with the police, and that's when she confessed to Joe what she had said to the police. A 36 page statement was prepared and at the end Mary Beth um, put out a statement saying what she told the police. She signed and dated the confession. According to the statement she said that she killed Tammy Lynn because she wouldn't stop crying. She was arrested and charged with the murder of Tammy Lynn. In the preliminary hearing Mary Beth said that the 36 page statement was a false confession. She said that the police was telling her to say this and make up the story. The trial began and after 29 hours, Mary Beth Tinning was convicted of murdering her child, Tammy Lynn. Now I know a lot of people are wondering like me, what did Joe Tinning think about this whole time? All of his children passed away. And I was just thinking like, what was his thoughts throughout this whole process and my thought is that he subconsciously knew something was happening and that Mary Beth was doing something but he kind of pushed it down and just kind of denied it that's my thought that's my opinion you can disagree with it but I think he subconsciously knew I mean there's no way that child after child especially after Michael's death like what did you think like I don't know now Mary Beth Tinning has had a lot of parole hearings trying to be released from prison but all of them were denied Joe Tinning continues to stand by Mary Beth and he still visits her till today thank you guys so much for watching this video um, I like watching these types of videos on YouTube about like true crimes and stuff like this and this is my first one and I'll get better at it. Um, so but I hope you guys enjoyed this and stay tuned for my next weekly vlog. Bye!